Episode 191, Inspector System. There was suddenly a thud and then light dragging of a chair against the floor. Kathy, who was sitting in the front row, suddenly put down her ballpoint pen and stood up. She turned and walked toward the back, looking at Jade and Julia coldly. Sensing something was not right, the guys who were crowding around the back rows scattered. Sorry, but this is the class for sophomores only and the class is about to begin. Please leave now, Kathy said sternly as she walked over. Julia looked at her and backed off two steps, but Jade took one step forward. That sounds weird. We just want to sit in on your class. Why would that bother you? They glared at each other, and shots flew between their eyes. I'm the class president, and I asked you not to interfere with the order of our class, Kathy said calmly, though everyone could see that she was angry. Does the uni forbid other students from sitting in on a class? Jade wouldn't back off. She continued to stare at Kathy. They had similar heights, so they faced each other with livid expressions, leveled. This confrontation lasted only several seconds, and the guys had all settled down to watch how the drama would unfold. However, Jacob couldn't let it continue. He stood up immediately and pulled them apart. Okay, stop it. But look at her. She's so mean. Jade turned to him and complained. Kathy gritted her teeth and shook slightly with fury. Stop it. You guys should go. If you want to keep me company, please come when we're in a big classroom when multiple classes are present. Sensing Kathy's anger, Jacob said to Jade and Julia. We didn't bother her. Why did she have to come over here and not mind her own business? Jade was stubborn and determined to fight with Kathy. Jade, Julia, Kathy couldn't contain her anger anymore. Don't think that you can do whatever you want just because you're related to the vice principal. Kathy turned to Jacob, but before she could open her mouth, Jade said, Oh, I get it. You're jealous, aren't you? Kathy's face fell, looking like she was about to lose her temper. Jade, Julia. Jacob's tone got stern. Go back. Jade looked stiff, and Julia tugged at her lightly. Sister, let it go. Kathy stood there and looked at them. The guys froze with fear, and no one dared to utter a word. In the past, Kathy had always been calm and never lost her temper. However, Jade and Julia seemed to have triggered something inside her. Jade pulled Julia out of the classroom. Before she left, she gave Kathy a stare. Kathy didn't back off. She squinted her eyes and stared back. The guys were excited since they had never seen Kathy get into a fight like that. That's when the warning bell rang. Glancing at Jacob, Kathy said to him, Jacob, please conduct yourself properly next time. Then she turned and stomped away to her seat in the front row. You're finished, finished. Ryan leaned over to Jacob and gloated over Jacob's misfortune. The other guys were also excited. After all, it was quite a shock that Kathy, sister of the mighty Kyle, had a clash with Vice Principal Liam's granddaughter during their class. When the class ended, Kathy, still angry, packed up her bag and left the classroom without a word. Jacob thought of sending her a text or calling her, but found both inadequate. In the next few days, the atmosphere between Jacob and Kathy was awkward to say the least. Even the other girls in the class began to cast unfriendly glances at Jacob. Jacob continued to tutor Sophie each evening and cultivate the Sword Shadow Scroll. It seemed like nothing had changed. His cultivation progress was zero. Friday came, and the cold relationship between Jacob and Kathy had no sign of thawing. She refused to return his texts or answer his phone calls, 
and she ignored him when he walked over to try to talk to her. Jacob got a taste of Kathy's stubbornness. When the last class ended, Kathy picked up her things and walked out of the classroom. Her roommate walked to Jacob's side and poked his forehead with her finger. You idiot! Kathy almost cried that day. Really? When? Jacob was astonished. During class, after the fight. Why did you think she was silent? She was trying to contain her tears. Angry at the memory, she hit his arm with her fist. The punch was not forceful, but Jacob felt a lump in his throat. The others had all gone out to watch Sam practice basketball. Jacob was the only one in the classroom, picking up his stuff in slow motion. The campus was quiet, except for the occasional cheer of the students celebrating the end of the school week. Jacob didn't know if Kathy would go home and talk her heart out with that old grandma, but he had no one to talk to. Not wanting to discuss such a matter with Sam and his buddies, he had to mull it over himself. He was about to leave the classroom sullenly when he saw Susan standing at the door. Upset? Susan looked at him and asked. Just some problems, Jacob answered. Problems of the mortals are of no interest to me, Susan looked at him. You come with me today. I need you to do me a favor. Jacob couldn't refuse Susan's request for help. He picked up his bag and walked to the door. Susan turned and walked out with him. Downstairs, Jacob started the Ferrari while Susan got in the car. When the car passed the basketball court, Michael, who was in his loose sports jersey, was drinking water on the sideline. When he saw Susan in the passenger seat of Jacob's Ferrari, he choked on the water. Jacob saw Michael as well. However, with his current strength, he no longer thought of Michael as his rival. He stepped slightly on the gas pedal and the Ferrari shot out of the campus. When they were out of the campus, it occurred to Jacob that he hadn't asked Susan where they were going. To my home, Susan said when he finally asked. Jacob's interest was piqued, not expecting that they would go to Susan's home. Then, he remembered Liam telling him once that Susan lived near his house. While Susan gave directions, Jacob drove the car steadily. They didn't try to make any conversation other than Susan telling him where to go. After entering the high-end residential complex, Susan directed Jacob to park the car in the underground parking lot. She took him into the elevator, which made Jacob feel a familiar vibe. The elevator reached the eighth floor. Jacob walked out of the elevator and saw Liam's apartment. In this building, two apartments shared one floor. Susan lived right across from Liam. Jacob had spent several nights at Liam's place, and he had never imagined that Susan was living next door. Elder Liam was indeed the master of public relations. He not only arranged for Jade and Julia to live at his place to draw them over, but also made Susan, an inspector, into a lecturer at his school. On top of that, he got her a place next door to him. He was doing everything he could to make friends for the benefit of their clan. Unlocking the door, Susan walked into the apartment. The smooth wooden floor was spotless, and it was much like Susan's white and spotless office. The facilities in the apartment were luxurious, including a supersized flat-screen TV and a huge chandelier. Next to the living room was Susan's cultivation room, which was connected to the balcony. What favor do you want me to do? Jacob asked. He imagined that it must be some tricky task that even an inspector couldn't handle. Susan didn't say anything and started a pot of tea. She handed a cup of tea to him before pointing upward. A light bulb was burned out. Can you change a bulb for me? Jacob almost spat out the mouthful of tea he had just taken. I don't want mortals in here, and Liam doesn't know how to do it either. So, I had to resort to asking you, Susan explained lightly. Jacob dried the corners of his mouth and put down the cup of tea he had been drinking. 
He walked to the door and found the switch before pressing them down. He placed a stool under the chandelier and stood up on it before unscrewing the broken bulb and replacing it with a new one that Susan handed him. His parents were usually not home, and his grandma used to let him do these odd jobs, so Jacob was no stranger to this. After he changed the bulb and pushed up the switch, the new bulb blinked twice and began emitting light. Jumping down from the stool, he asked, Anything else I can do for you? The kitchen sink is clogged. You can help with that, Susan responded. Is she requesting me or ordering me? Jacob thought and sighed before going to the kitchen. He turned on the water and found that the drainage was clogged up. He bent down and pulled out the tube before cleaning the dirty stuff out of it. While he was washing the dirty stuff off his hands, he looked back at her and asked, Anything else? The dryer rack on the balcony is loose. Can you fix it? Susan asked. Sighing slightly, Jacob walked through Susan's spacious bedroom and got to the connecting balcony to check the dryer rack. Seeing that some screws on the rack were loose, he asked her for the tools and tightened the screws. Anything else? Jacob asked her in exasperation. Susan was obviously like an idiot in ordinary life, despite her talent and cultivation. That's all. I will cook us some dinner, Susan said. Looking at this woman who was extraordinary and beautiful, Jacob shook his head immediately and said, No thanks. She couldn't even get these simple jobs done. God only knows how her cooking skills would be he thought. This is our dinner. Susan dug out two packs of instant noodles from the refrigerator and tossed one at Jacob as if reading his thoughts. By the way, do you want to join our inspector system? Susan asked abruptly. Episode 192, Practice Battle with Susan. Inspector? Jacob froze. In the inspector system, we have official inspectors and assisting inspectors. Every official inspector can have one assisting inspector, Susan continued. While she talked, she tore open the package of the instant noodles, placed all the items into a bowl, and poured hot water into it. It was clear to him now that Susan didn't get him here to only fix the stuff for her. She also wanted to talk about this offer. What are assisting inspectors? Jacob asked. Susan poured hot water into Jacob's bowl and explained, Assisting inspectors don't have to join Dragon God Shrine. The official inspectors can choose their own assistants and report to the headquarters. In short, they are unofficial helpers. Jacob didn't know that inspectors could have their own assistants. In his mind, inspectors all operated independently. Most inspectors don't recruit assistants. After all, they have passed multiple tests in Dragon God Shrine and have reached 7th level at least. They don't need any assistance. On the contrary, the assistants might be burdens to them. Susan put the covers on the bowls while she explained. Jacob nodded, thinking that if he were a 7th level master, he wouldn't want a low 3rd level cultivator to help him. However, from what Susan had told him, it seemed like she wanted him to be her burden. The relationship between the assisting inspector and the official inspector is that of subordinate and superior. If you became my assisting inspector, you would be a part of Dragon God Shrine and anyone who even thinks about attacking you will have to consider the potential backlash coming from Dragon God Shrine. Susan stared at Jacob and said slowly, In short, you want to protect me by giving me this identity, right? Jacob asked her directly. 
I don't have to give you special protection. With this identity, you automatically get some protection, Susan explained. Why would you do that? Jacob continued to ask. You look good to me, Susan answered. Jacob nodded and thought for a while, before asking, Does this have anything to do with Sophie's uncle's heavenly tribulation? With Kenneth's strength, he has a 60% chance of passing the heavenly tribulation, which is a high success ratio itself. Combined with the careful preparations the North Atlantic is making, he should have a better chance than all the masters who tried to pass the heavenly tribulation in the last few hundred years. However, as an inspector, I must be prepared if Kenneth fails. She lifted the cover of her bowl and picked up a fork. The aroma of the instant noodles floated up. Jacob's stomach grumbled, and he also lifted the cover from his bowl in a hurry. If Kenneth failed to pass the heavenly tribulation, the South Atlantic would take the opportunity to invade the North Atlantic's territory. If the two sides engaged in a fierce battle, Jacob, a low-level cultivator, would be easily killed since no one would care if he was the prince or not. This was what Susan was worried about. That was why she watched the situation closely and wanted to give Jacob the title of assisting inspector. Jacob understood Susan's motive. She looked cold, but was quite good to him. For Susan, making Jacob her assisting inspector cost her nothing. Although she didn't have high hopes for his cultivation future, he was quite useful to her, such as changing light bulbs. If you want the position, we'll sign the contract. I'll tutor you in terms of cultivation periodically, and you don't have to do anything special for me. You just need to patrol with me when it's necessary, Susan said, eating her noodles. Okay, I agree to be your assisting inspector, Jacob said, after taking a long moment to think. Good. Susan nodded and took out a piece of pale paper from her pocket. She murmured some words, and the paper turned into a beam of white light shooting through the window. I just issued a voice transmission talisman to the headquarters. Susan turned her head and looked at Jacob. From now on, you are my assisting inspector. Okay. Jacob nodded, knowing that the so-called assisting inspector was just a temporary help for Susan, not an actual inspector in the system. After the instant noodles, Susan took Jacob into her cultivation room to teach him how to use the energy spheres. They both didn't want a repeat of Sophie's birthday party where Jacob was caught off guard when challenged. To build the energy spheres, one must form a screen with nature essence using the spirit concentration scroll. Since people below the first level couldn't see through the essence, they also couldn't see through the energy spheres, let alone the potential battles inside. Under Susan's instructions, Jacob tried several times before finally releasing a layer of essence from his body and forming a solid energy sphere. It was the essential ability of all cultivators. From now on, no matter who his rivals were, he couldn't fight in front of mortals. He also learned that the red spheres meant practice fights, whereas the white spheres represented death battles. After he had mastered how to create the energy spheres, Jacob sat down to cultivate. Susan didn't tell him to leave, and that meant that she was allowing him to stay. They sat facing each other. The purple smoke in the incense furnace floated up gently under the soft lights in the room. Suddenly, Jacob had a feeling of ventilation in his body. Inside his dragon core, the third opening was unlocked. Like bubbles, another two openings appeared in the dragon core. Jacob was pleasantly surprised. He had made no progress recently with his cultivation, but now he had just unlocked three openings in one go. Before he could savor this moment, another two openings were unlocked in the dragon core. Two plus three plus two. He had unlocked seven openings by now, and five of them appeared in quick succession. 
The feeling was so wonderful that Jacob didn't dare to move. He sat quietly, hoping that more openings would be unlocked. Jacob hoped to hear more of the bubble-popping sounds. However, the dragon core became silent. It was just absorbing the essence of nature at high speed. Jacob opened his eyes and saw Susan sitting cross-legged across from him. Her posture was so still that she looked like a statue. He observed her closely. Her facial features were so aligned that they looked like they came right out of a painting. No wonder the extremely arrogant Tom has fallen for her, Jacob thought to himself. He turned his head to check the time and found that it was already six o'clock in the morning. They had spent the whole night cultivating. Susan opened her eyes slowly. Let's have a practice battle. If your sword energies can touch me, you win. What do I get if I win? Jacob asked her immediately. You can't possibly win against me, Susan just said lightly. Okay. Jacob stood up, wanting to take the opportunity to test his strength after unlocking seven openings. With a bang, he released his nature essence and built a red energy sphere. Compared with the state when he had only unlocked two openings, he felt a noticeable increase in the five elemental essence in his body. The dragon core was like an engine and a reservoir for nature essence. Whenever he unlocked one opening, the absorption power and the reservoir volume would increase. Two gray sword energies appeared in Jacob's palms, and Susan summoned a white jade sword into her hand while looking at Jacob. Let's begin. Jacob threw gray sword energy at Susan. The sword energy was a combination of five elements, or lightning power, as Jade and Julia called it. Susan stepped aside before shattering the sword energy with the tip of her sword. Like an exploding lightning bolt, the sword energy crackled upon contact with the tip of the white jade sword. A weak surge of lightning traveled along with the sword, numbing Susan's fingers slightly. Before Susan could make any adjustments, Jacob threw out the second sword energy, and Susan blocked it with the body of her sword. With another series of crackling sounds, the sword energy exploded, and Susan felt another numbing sensation in her palm. The sword energy could break all five elements. Susan's sword was made with godly jade from a place of extreme coldness, and it was a very precious material. Otherwise, Susan wouldn't have made it her natal treasure. However, Jacob's sword energy could even break the special power of her jade sword, while the lightning traveled along with the godly jade, which could fend off all evil energies and elements. Susan was a bit surprised. If Jacob were more powerful than the first level, she would have been defeated. If Jacob were at seventh level, she would have been forced to let go of her sword in the first round itself. Episode 193 Do You Believe in Cultivation? However, that was all he could do. In the past, he could only throw out one sword energy. Now, with seven openings unlocked, he could at most throw out two. After that, he changed to the ordinary five elemental sword energies. He tossed out white sword energy. White represented the metal element, and Susan cultivated the metal essences. Her sword arced elegantly in the air, and the special material of the sword turned the white sword energy into nothing. Jacob flickered his wrists and pushed his palms forward, releasing so many sword energies that it looked endless. The power in the sword energies was weak, but he would win if any one of them touched Susan. He drew one thread of essence from each element into each of his sword energies. If the total value of each elemental essence in Jacob's body was 10, then the value of each sword energy he released was 1. 
Susan had meant to test Jacob and give him some battle experience, but she was surprised to see that he had gotten more powerful with each attack. At first, he released one sword energy at a time with only one finger. Then, he could release two with two fingers. Now, he could release sword energies with all ten fingers at the same time. Each attack contained ten sword energies. Jacob didn't care about which elemental essence he released, so the attack was a mix of all five colors, white, green, blue, red, and yellow. If people were watching, they would see a dizzying cluster of dancing sword energies. Under his fierce attacks, it felt like Susan was forced to focus on defending herself and couldn't spare any strength to attack. Before the first wave of the ten sword energies could reach her, Jacob released another ten sword energies. Susan could have blocked these sword energies with one defense essence shield, but it wouldn't be good practice for either of them. The moment she blocked ten sword energies with her sword, another ten were in the air, while ten more were being released from Jacob's fingers. Susan faced thirty sword energies altogether at the same time. She wasn't an experienced fighter. Therefore, she looked calm, but her movements became frantic. Finally, sword energy went through her defense and shot toward her body. Susan tried to dodge, but it pierced through her clothes. At this sight, Jacob immediately stopped releasing more sword energies. Susan's right arm sleeve was cut. Jacob withdrew the red energy sphere, signaling the end of the practice. Susan turned her head to look at the cut on her cloth. She withdrew her sword and pulled the sleeves together. How was it, Susan? Jacob asked with sincerity. You were okay, Susan said lightly. Even though she was defeated, she had to maintain the dignity of a master. Jacob smiled in embarrassment. He didn't think that his random attacks could break through Susan's defense. He thought Susan had let him win to make him feel good. This, he looked at her, I'll buy you a new shirt. No, Susan said coldly before walking toward her bedroom. Knowing that she had gone to her room to change, Jacob stood there and thought for a while. Finding it was already seven o'clock in the morning, he went into the kitchen and took out a pan and some eggs. He began to cook. When Susan walked out of her room in a changed dress, she smelled the aroma of breakfast. She found Jacob in the kitchen. Beside a pot of tea was a plate with scrambled eggs on it. I made a simple breakfast. Jacob poured the tea into two cups and carried them and the plate of eggs to the dining table. It was the first time that someone cooked breakfast for Susan. Usually, she would cultivate unless she got hungry. Then, she would eat instant noodles. Jacob just needed to eat breakfast in the morning, and the most efficient way to go about it was to cook. Susan sat down and began to eat as well. The scrambled eggs were not extraordinary in taste, but they were better than instant noodles. She looked up at Jacob and thought about the practice battle. He is only at the first level, but... He can now shoot 30 sword energies continuously. If he continues to increase his strength with cultivation, he will be able to control these 30 sword energies and move them around instead of shooting them randomly. Is it possible that I underestimated the power of the sword shadow scroll? After eating the simple breakfast, Jacob picked up his empty plate and stood up. If you have nothing else for me to do here, I'll go home now. Susan nodded. Jacob washed his bowl in the sink. Then, he walked out of the kitchen and headed toward the door. <clears throat> <clears throat> Looking at his back, Susan coughed abruptly before saying, Um, if you want, you can cultivate at my place for a couple of days. Thank you, but I'd better go so you can cultivate without interruption. Jacob said as he put on his shoes at the door. Jacob waved his hand at the door and closed it behind him after walking out. The big apartment was quiet with Susan in it alone. Eating the breakfast that was still warm, 
Susan was deep in thought. In the practice battle, she wanted to instruct him. However, Jacob's unstructured sword attacks inspired her. Since her own sword techniques needed polishing, Jacob would be a good partner in training. Besides, this guy can cook good breakfasts. Jacob got to the underground parking lot and drove the Ferrari out of the complex. When he got out of Susan's apartment, he had toyed with the idea of visiting Liam's home. On second thought, he decided against it. He called Sophie, but she didn't answer. Then he called Helen, but the result was the same. Worried, he called Liam and was told that Sophie and her family had gone to the Dragon Palace to inspect the altar. Jacob also learnt from him that Jade and Julia had gone out shopping. He congratulated himself on the decision of not visiting Liam's home. Otherwise, he would be dragged by the girls to go shopping. He drove the car into the garage of his home on the seaside. He wasn't planning to drive it in the future. It was too eye-catching to be driven around the campus. The house was quiet and lonesome since Grandma was absent, while Uncle James had also returned to his home. After cleaning the house, he glanced at the cloudy sky before sitting down cross-legged in front of the window and starting to cultivate. In the sounds of the surging sea waves, Jacob felt like he had returned to his childhood and Kathy's figure flashed in his mind. It was a little girl with big round eyes, and her hands and feet were dirty with mud. Jacob opened his eyes and glanced at the cell phone by his side. After a moment of consideration, he picked it up and dialed Kathy's number. It was about nine in the morning, but he was sure that Kathy was up. After two rings, the call was connected. Is it Jacob? Kay has gone out for groceries. What's up? A man's deep voice sounded on the phone. After a moment of being startled, Jacob immediately realized that it was Kyle. Obviously, Kathy didn't take the phone with her. Well, nothing special. I just wanted to talk to her, Jacob said. Why talk over the phone? Take her out on a date. Kyle scolded him on the phone. Um, just tell her I called, Jacob said in a low voice and ended the call. He closed his eyes again and tried to continue cultivating, but he couldn't concentrate. His mind kept summoning the images of Kathy when she was little. He stopped cultivating and looked at the ocean outside of the window, immersed in his childhood memories. He didn't have a clear memory of Little Carrot, but the image of her was buried deep in his subconsciousness. At that time, he just felt like that girl was annoying, following him everywhere. But when she was gone, he had missed her for a long time. His cell phone vibrated. Seeing Kathy's name on the screen, he answered it immediately. Jacob, you called me? What did you want to talk to me about? Kathy's clear voice came to him over the phone. Oh, nothing special. Did you go out for groceries? Yeah, Kyle wants to eat something fancy and it's my turn to cook, Kathy said. Kathy didn't sound cold. It meant that she was no longer angry with him. Holding the phone in his hand, Jacob didn't know how to continue. Kathy hesitated for a few seconds before asking, Jacob, do you believe in the stuff like cultivation? Episode 194, Susan Tricked Me Again. Cultivation? Jacob's heart raced, and he almost dropped the phone. Nothing. I happened to see it on TV. It has gotten cold recently. Remember to dress warm. Kathy quickly changed the subject. Okay, you take care as well, Jacob said. He felt weird by the sudden pivot in the conversation, but was smarter than to bring it up. When Grandma's back, I'll go visit her. 
Kathy said gently before hanging up. Heaving a sigh of relief, Jacob sat back down cross-legged and continued to cultivate. With a stress-free mind now, he could actually concentrate on it. Beams of five-colored light flashed around him, which was the result of the combination of the Sword Shadow Scroll and the Spirit Concentration Scroll. The weak sword energies traveled through and around his body. Gradually, although still at the first level, Jacob felt like he was becoming one with the swords. The seven openings in the Dragon Core were absorbing and releasing nature essence, transmitting five elements into his meridians and blood. Only three more openings were needed before he could reach the second level. It would be another significant milestone for him. He cultivated until midnight, and he felt a bit lonesome when he opened his eyes. He looked outside, listening to the pitter-patter. It was drizzling. The raindrops slipped down from the eaves of his room, dripping on his windows and creating rhythmic sounds. He tossed and turned on his bed and couldn't sleep. Finally, the morning came, but he didn't want to get up in the cold, even though he was starving. The lazy atmosphere on this rainy day permeated the whole house. Bored, he picked up a book, but found it uninteresting. If Sophie's uncle's heavenly tribulation wasn't close, Jacob would have been in Helen's studio helping her. He was debating with himself if he should get up when he suddenly heard a gentle voice. Master! He was so startled that he almost jumped out of his bed. In pale blue casual clothing, the grinning Jade and Julia pushed open his door and walked in. Why are you here? Jacob pulled the quilt tightly around him and rolled to the corner of the bed. We are here to take you out, Master. Jade walked closer with a grin. She pulled the quilt off him before handing him a change of clothes. Master, get up and change. And your breakfast is in the living room. Julia said softly. Seeing Jacob not moving, Jade asked again, Do you want us to help you change? No, no. Jacob waved his hand immediately. You can go out now. These girls should really take a lesson on mortal boundaries, he thought as he rolled his eyes. They exchanged a look before backing out of his room with satisfaction. Jacob heaved a sigh of relief. Hurriedly, he took off his pajamas and changed into the clothes they gave him. An ordinary guy would feel extremely happy to be followed by those two beauties all day long. However, Jacob was alarmed by their sudden appearance. Anyway, the sisters were seventh-level masters and thus couldn't be driven away by force. After walking out of his room, Jacob went downstairs and saw a big breakfast on the dining table. He knew that their cooking skills were tolerable. The last time when Sam and the others got the runs after eating the cake they made, the sisters attributed it to the elixir they added to the cake, but Jacob was skeptical. Looking at the big breakfast, Jacob didn't want to hurt their feelings by refusing to eat it. Yawning, he sat down with a frown before eating tentatively. Oh, these sandwiches are delicious. This juice and salad are quite good, too. Seeing the surprised look on Jacob's face, Jade and Julia looked at each other and smiled. Master, how is the food? Jacob looked up at them with surprise. Excellent! Jade and Julia were content and smiled at him before saying in unison, We are glad you like it. Master, we went and visited your grandma yesterday. Jade said as she started clearing the table. Oh? Jacob finished the breakfast and stood up. We are glad to report that she's in good health, Master, Julia added. Grandma must have been very pleased to see them. These sisters know how to make Grandma happy, Jacob thought to himself. They were indeed considerate since they spent a whole day visiting Grandma and keeping her company. Why did you want to come and do the cooking for me? Jacob asked as he began to help them in cleaning up a bit. 
Master, we're here to apologize, Julia said. Apologize? Yeah, we shouldn't have quarreled with your class president that day, Julia continued. Thinking of his mean attitude toward them, Jacob felt a bit guilty. Don't worry, I just hope you won't fight with people in the future. We won't, Julia promised with a smile. However, Jade didn't speak, obviously still angry at Kathy. Julia must have dragged her here to apologize. And we have good news. Julia's tone suddenly became joyous. What good news? Her happiness lifted Jacob's mood. The house had become lively with these two girls moving around. My sister and I have broken through. Julia's eyes sparkled like twinkling stars. To the low-tier eighth level? Jacob asked cautiously. He remembered Susan had once told him that Jade and Julia possessed powers equivalent to top-tier seventh level when they were released from the Dragon Palace. Our cultivation power is not calculated with that system, but it's equivalent to the level you just said. Julia's face was full of joy. By her side, Jade nodded as well. Low tier 8th level. Two 8th level masters. What was more, they were two 8th level masters who could coordinate with each other seamlessly. Susan was only at middle tier 8th level, and Kenneth, who was preparing for the heavenly tribulation, was only at top tier 8th level. Anyway, we didn't disappoint you and recovered some of our cultivation power. Jade looked at Jacob and said, Well, keep up your good work. Jacob nodded. In fact, he didn't know what to say. He wouldn't be surprised if they elevated to middle tier 8th level in a short time. No wonder Susan was concerned about them. From what I see, your cultivation strength has also increased, Julia said as she looked at Jacob closely. Yeah, I've unlocked seven openings. I guess I'll reach the second level soon, Jacob said. Master, that is awesome. They complimented him. Jacob was embarrassed knowing that his progress was tiny compared with their leap from 7th level to 8th level. And you seem to have joined the inspector system? Jade gazed at Jacob and said, How do you know? Jacob looked at her in surprise. There's a faint golden flame mark on your forehead. It's the symbol of an inspector. Jade poked his forehead with a finger and said, Jacob couldn't see his forehead, but he guessed that there must be a mark that could only be seen by cultivators. Although as an assisting inspector, he didn't have much power, the mark was protection to him. Although he had never thought of asking Susan for protection, he was grateful for it. Seeing the doubt on Jade's face, Jacob explained, I'm not an official inspector, but just an assistant who runs errands for Susan. Assisting Inspector? Jade pursed her lips in consideration. As far as I know, Assisting Inspectors are usually not involved in the business of Dragon God Shrine and are only responsible to their official inspectors. But... She paused, and Jacob felt like something was not right. But what? he asked. But the Assisting Inspectors have to be tested each year. If they don't pass it, the consequences are, well, huge, Jade said. What? Jacob almost yelled. Susan, she played me again. Jacob thought that Susan was only doing a favor to him, but he was tricked into a corner by her yet again. Well, according to what we know about it, the assisting inspectors are candidates for the positions of official inspectors. They are chosen and eliminated each year. Only those with true powers can work with the official inspectors. When their strengths grow strong enough and they have passed the final test, they can become official inspectors, Julia added. Jacob was incensed, knowing that he was tricked by Susan. Besides the relationship of superior and subordinate, 
Assisting inspectors and official inspectors are also partners. The official inspectors would tutor the assisting inspectors on cultivation, while the assisting inspectors would help the official inspectors get some tasks done, Julia said. Stop, stop. Jacob raised his hand to stop them, feeling a huge headache setting in. He asked the most important question. Can I quit? Once you become an assisting inspector, your name is registered in their headquarters. You have to pass the tests and become an official inspector before you can quit. If you quit without permission, you would be eliminated. Julia answered him. Eliminated? Jacob heard the cruel word again. Life was as cold as snow. Episode 195, Early Activation After seeing Jacob's astonished expression, Julia continued, The inspector system is too huge for us to fight against. Jacob waved his hand and said, You don't have to worry about it. The inspector system was a mysterious existence, and Jacob didn't think that it was such a bad thing for him to be partly involved in it. Jade and Julia stood beside him for further instructions. Oh, you haven't told me your opinions on natal treasures, Jacob said. Basically, every cultivator would have a natal treasure, and some techniques would allow for two natal treasures, one for the defense and one for the offense. However, you are cultivating the Sword Shadow Scroll, which will eventually enable you to kill enemies with the sword energies alone. I don't think you need to obtain a natal treasure right now. Jade's opinion was surprisingly similar to that of the little boy. What are your natal treasures? Jacob asked. Jade and Julia waved their wrists, revealing two exquisite bracelets. These bracelets can be used for defense and attack. Also, they could trap and tie down enemies. They come in a pair, so we both have one. Their powers would be maximized when both the bracelets are used together, Julia explained. Are they mighty? Jacob asked curiously. Master, look! Julia took off her bracelet and tossed it out. It flew to the sky above the ocean, turning into the size of a small mountain instantly. The bracelet released a golden light, blowing a massive hole in the surface of the sea. Since the water near the beach isn't deep, even the seabed was revealed. A huge whirlpool was created instantly as water flowed back into the hole. The seawater surged up as high as about 10 meters, and the violent air current it caused rushed up and pierced a hole in the dark clouds above. Jacob was dumbfounded. With a smile, Julia waved her hand and the bracelet resumed its original form before flying back onto her wrist. Seeing Jacob's astonishment, Julia stuck out her tongue and poked his shoulder. Master, I just used one-tenth of its power. One-tenth? Jacob gasped. It was only one-tenth of the power? If she unleashed the full power of the bracelets... It would be powerful enough to wipe out the whole city. Now he understood why Susan was nervous about them. Seeing Jacob's expression turning from astonished to alarmed, Jade smiled and said, Don't worry, Master. We won't abuse our power. However, I think you can still get a natal treasure for defense. After all, you can use the Sword Shadow Scroll for attacking. Jade continued, in my opinion, you don't need a defensive natal treasure as well. The sword energies would be enough to defend you and attack your enemies. If you don't have top-tier materials to make a natal treasure, it would be a waste of time and effort, Julia said. Okay, Jacob nodded. After listening to their explanations, he had lost a lot of interest in the natal treasures. 
When I cultivate the Sword Shadow Scroll to an advanced level, I will be able to release thousands of sword energies. By then, I could use 500 of them to attack my enemies and use another 500 to form a sword energy wall around me, Jacob thought to himself. Imagining having thousands of sword energies under his command, Jacob became excited and felt like he would be invincible. Master! Master! Julia waved her hand before his eyes, pulling him back to reality. Oh, you two can watch TV and I'll just read a book. Jacob was planning to go back to his room upstairs to cultivate, but he changed his mind. He went up and grabbed two architectural books before going downstairs to keep them company. Jade and Julia nodded happily. Hand in hand, they sat on the sofa to watch TV while Jacob read his books beside them. It was still drizzling outside, but the atmosphere was warm inside with the twins in the house. The humid air carried a sweet fragrance. Jade and Julia discussed the leading actor of the drama they were watching and also made comments about the leading actress, like two ordinary girls. After lunch, the sisters showed no intention of leaving, and Jacob was okay with them staying. Since it was still raining, he spent the afternoon reading. In the evening, Jade and Julia told him that they couldn't go back due to the rain and wanted to stay the night there. Knowing that it was just an excuse for them to stay here and keep him company, Jacob didn't object to their plan. The drizzle continued until Monday morning. Jacob didn't want to drive, so the sisters followed him to the bus stop, each holding a small flower-patterned umbrella. While they were waiting for the bus at the bus stop, the handful of people who were also waiting for the bus kept glancing at Jade and Julia. Jacob was always fascinated by how much attention the sisters could attract by just standing there. They may be settling well into the mortal lifestyle, but just them standing next to a mortal shows just how different they are. They are from the heavenly realm after all. On the bus, they sat on each side of Jacob. Life was simple and warm, and Jacob felt like he was back in high school. The bus drove slowly, and they arrived at the university one hour later. Jade and Julia kept up the chatter the whole ride. Though Jacob wasn't very interested in indulging in their conversations right now, he didn't have the heart to tell them that. So, he sat quietly for the most part, focusing on the water droplets running down the window of their seat and replying to them only when necessary. High-spirited, Jade and Julia walked to class with a spring in their step, hand in hand. Jacob also went to his classroom. After a minute, Kathy walked in with an umbrella in her hand. She kept her umbrella against the wall in a corner, and she smiled at Jacob after seeing that he was already there. They were the only people in the classroom. Jacob was early today since he came directly from home, and Kathy came early to the class so she could take one of the seats in the front row before others took them. The drizzle continued. Jacob looked out through the window and saw Susan passing by while holding an umbrella. A black Mercedes-Benz drove from a distance and stopped in front of their building. The short elder Frank got out of the car as two bodyguards in black suits followed him. Then the passenger door opened and another man got out of the car. In a suit and a pair of sunglasses, a man walked out elegantly, though his back was a little bent. On a closer look, Jacob almost choked. It was General Arthur. He had only been on land several times, but he looked entirely different now. A bodyguard in a black suit walked to him and held up a black umbrella for him. General Arthur only nodded slightly. Damn, he looks like a boss now, Jacob thought. The group walked into the building while the black Mercedes-Benz waited outside. Jacob racked his brain for what could be the reason for this surprise visit. As far as he knew, none of the other elders visited the college to meet Elder Liam until absolutely imperative. The presence of General Arthur, who, if given a choice, would never step out of the palace, was even more daunting. 
It must be something extremely important. Meanwhile, in the classroom, Kathy already sat down and was flicking off the water droplets from her shoes and the edge of her pants. Then, she looked back at Jacob and opened her mouth. She was about to say something. But, interrupting her, Jacob's cell phone suddenly vibrated. It showed Liam's phone number. Jacob answered it. Master Jacob, Elder Kenneth's heavenly tribulation got activated earlier than we expected. We must go to the Dragon Palace right now, Liam told him over the phone. Episode 196 The Heavenly Tribulation is Coming After hearing this news, Jacob stood up immediately with his cell phone in his hand. Kathy was about to talk to him, but blinked instead when she saw the expression on his face. Through the window, Jacob saw the Mercedes-Benz driving toward the building he was in and rushed out of the classroom without hesitation. Kathy wanted to call out to him, but it was too late. Dashing out of the building, Jacob saw that the black Mercedes-Benz had already stopped at the entrance. Without thinking, he pulled open the door and got in. Liam, Elder Frank, and General Arthur were already in this car while the bodyguards sat in the car that was following them. Their expressions were not as grim as Jacob had expected, but they didn't seem relaxed either. The car drove out of the campus steadily and headed toward the direction of the sea. Soph and the others are already there, right? Jacob asked. Right, Liam nodded. The car was spacious inside. Light music resonated in the car while the drizzle continued outside. Jacob's cell phone vibrated. He picked up the phone and saw a text message from Kathy. Jacob, why did you run out? The class is about to begin. Where are you going? After a moment of consideration, Jacob answered back. Something happened and I will probably come back quite late. Then he turned off the cell phone to avoid further interruptions. How about Jade and Julia? Are they coming? Jacob asked Liam. No, they are not a part of our clan, Liam answered him simply. Probably due to the presence of the prince, Liam and the others didn't talk. The only sound in the car was the light music. They arrived at the seaside and got to the huge black rock. Liam and others took Jacob into the undersea tunnel. When they came to the main gate of the Dragon Palace... Jacob felt like it was quite different. All kinds of array formations were activated, and the number of patrolling soldiers had doubled. As Kenneth's heavenly tribulation drew near, the whole of the North Atlantic Dragon Palace looked as if they were preparing for war. All array formations were being used, and even the patrolling soldiers had all changed into armors. After passing the heavily guarded main gate... Liam, Jacob, and the others entered the palace. The altar for Kenneth's heavenly tribulation was situated in the northwest corner of the palace. Since they couldn't fly inside the palace, they had to walk there. On the way, they passed through several checkpoints. Even though the soldiers recognized Liam and General Arthur, they still checked their identifications. Jacob looked around and saw that the number of soldiers protecting key places, such as the Profound Cultivation Palace and Godly Treasure Palace, had doubled as well. They were impenetrable. If anyone wanted to take the opportunity to break into the North Atlantic Dragon Palace, they would be killed on the spot. Liam, Jacob, and the others finally arrived at a huge white altar where more than a thousand soldiers were guarding its edge. Each gold-armored general led a hundred silver-armored soldiers as they stood at one out of the twelve earthly branches. 
There were twelve earthly branches, so there were twelve gold-armored generals and twelve hundred silver-armored soldiers. Standing in uniform intervals beside the altar, it must look like a large compass from above. The altar that was made with one massive piece of white jade was even more majestic than the last time Jacob saw it. All kinds of complicated patterns and engravings were put on the altar, glittering brightly. All sorts of complex array formations could be activated at any time. All the elders in the Dragon Palace were present. The ten purple-robed elders who had the highest cultivation powers stood in the inner circle according to the positions of the ten heavenly stems. Even Jacob, who knew nothing about array formations, could tell that it was a very powerful array formation. At the center of the hill-sized white jade altar, Kenneth, who was in a simple robe, was sitting on the ground cross-legged with his eyes closed. Except for a black belt, he had no other decorations on him. On his right, there stood a black tripoint double-edged sword that had a handle of more than three meters long. Made from 10,000-year blue water mystic iron, the tripoint double-edged sword weighed 6,500 pounds. It had a similar shape to a trident, but it was a hundred times more powerful than a trident. This was Kenneth's weapon that contributed to his reputation. It was called Killing Tribulation. Kenneth was resting peacefully, and Jacob found the man extremely magnificent for the first time. People stood grim-faced around the altar while Kenneth was alone in the center. He was ready to embrace the tribulation of life and death with calmness. He deserved the name of the number one cultivator of the mortal world. Your Majesty? Jacob was woken from his daze by Liam's greeting. He turned and saw Dracon walking toward them with Helen and Sophie. Dracon nodded. The tension on his face showed his anxiety. Helen lightly smiled at him, and Sophie's big eyes glanced at Jacob while she remained silent. She had a deep bond with her uncle and was very nervous about his heavenly tribulation. Elder Kenneth estimated that the heavenly tribulation would come in six hours. General Arthur stepped forward and told Dracon. Okay. Get everyone prepared. Dracon waved his hand. Six hours? The clan put so much importance on Kenneth's heavenly tribulation that the whole dragon palace is getting ready six hours beforehand, Jacob thought. Time ticked away and everyone was tense. Although the heavenly tribulation was estimated to come in six hours, no one was sure if it would come earlier than that. Sophie was tired after standing for so long. She wanted to rest for a while, but couldn't find anywhere to lean on. Unless she sat on the ground, she couldn't really rest. However, as the princess, she would never do such an inappropriate thing. Seeing Helen and Dracon staring at Kenneth in the center of the altar, she silently moved to Jacob, clutching onto his clothes as she leaned onto his arm. Jacob had been cultivating the Sword Shadow Scroll, and he stopped and held her when he sensed her movements. Since Jacob had swallowed her dragon core, Sophie was now like an ordinary girl. It was too much for her to stand for several hours. However, Dracon ordered everyone to stand ready for the upcoming event, and no one could rest. Even he himself was standing, so Sophie couldn't be an exception. At this moment, the entire North Atlantic Dragon Palace had to unite and face the Heavenly Tribulation together. Dracon wouldn't let anything distract them. Sophie sighed in relief when Jacob held her. Her feet were less sore. However, she couldn't let go of her nerves, even in the comfort of Jacob. Thunder could be heard in the sky. Your Majesty... The heavenly tribulation will come in half an hour at most. General Arthur walked over and bowed as he reported. Array formation, 
Activate, Dracon ordered. The altar, made of one piece of unique white jade, began to move upward slowly. Sophie clutched Jacob's arm to steady herself. Shortly, the altar rose above the sea. It was dark all around. In the boundless darkness of the night, thunder resonated in the sky while lightning flashed. Surrounded by the dark sea, Jacob didn't know where this altar was in the vast ocean. But he guessed this location was selected beforehand by the palace and had been kept as a top secret to prevent their enemies from attacking them at this vital moment. In the sky, the thunder sounded and the lightning rolled in the dark clouds that were now very close to the surface of the sea. The occasional flashes turned the sea surface silver white. There was no trace of land in sight, and the frightening scene would have scared an average person. A platform slowly rose from the altar, and Dracon and Helen stood on it. Today, the Dragon King Dracon would personally command the Heavenly Tribulation Array Formation. Instantly, the wind picked up, and the sea waves surged up high. Sophie staggered slightly, and she immediately clutched onto Jacob's arm. Afraid that she would fall into the sea from the edge of the altar, Jacob firmly held her hand. Her palm was warm, but her fingertips were cold. A lightning bolt arced across the sky. Episode 197, The Heavenly Tribulation Even Jacob, who had never experienced such an event, knew that the Heavenly Tribulation was coming. Sophie was nervous. Her grip on Jacob's hand tightened. The lightning bolts traveled in the clouds, and the atmosphere on the huge altar, where more than 10,000 dragon cultivators gathered, was getting grimmer. The first lightning bolt crashed down from the clouds. It was as thick as an arm and purple. Ninth Heaven 18 Lightning Tribulation. General Arthur, who was standing beside Jacob and Sophie, murmured. Is it very powerful? Sophie asked him anxiously. Extremely powerful. More powerful than the wind fire lightning tribulation we expected. General Arthur furrowed his brows and said, Can Uncle Kenneth withstand it? Sophie asked again immediately. General Arthur turned his attention to the center of the altar and didn't answer. He acted as if he did not hear Sophie's question. The purple lightning bolt crashed down from the sky and landed on the top of Kenneth's head. Kenneth remained in the same place and didn't move a muscle. With a grunt, he withstood the first round of heavenly tribulation with his body. Since he had reached top-tier 8th level, his body was almost unbreakable. The moment the first heavenly lightning bolt crashed, the rain poured down from the dark clouds in the sky. The huge white jade altar released a pale blue light shield, blocking the rainwater. The first lightning bolt is not difficult to withstand, but the latter ones get more and more powerful, General Arthur said. Each of them would double in power compared with the previous one, and there are altogether 18 of them. Jacob made the calculations silently. If each lightning bolt is going to be twice as powerful as the last one, then the last lightning bolt would be almost a 100,000 times more powerful than the first one. A hundred thousand times. It's terrifying just to think about it. Sophie's math was not as good as Jacob's, but she was worried when she heard that each of the 18 lightning bolts was stronger than the one before it. She bit her lower lip, and her breathing became uneven. 
While they were talking, the second heaven lightning bolt crashed down. It was twice as loud as the first one, and it was thicker and brighter. Kenneth still sat there motionlessly, letting the lightning bolt crash into his body. His body lit up for a few seconds before returning to normal. Elder Kenneth is indeed the number one cultivator in the mortal world. He didn't resist the heavenly tribulation. On the contrary, he absorbed the power of the heavenly tribulation and saved it to withstand the later lightning bolts, General Arthur said in a low voice. Jacob and Sophie held each other's hands tightly while their eyes were locked on Kenneth, who was in the center of the altar. It was their first time witnessing a heavenly tribulation, and it was very important to the North Atlantic. The third heavenly lightning bolt came with a booming sound. It lit up half the sky. Jacob had toyed with the idea of helping Sophie's uncle absorb the power of lightning bolts with his technique. Now, seeing the great power of the heavenly lightning bolts, he knew how naive his idea had been. They were not only heavenly lightning bolts, they represented the power of heaven. Cultivation itself was against the natural law. It was okay if the cultivators just wanted to chill in the mortal world, but if they wanted to challenge the natural law and gain the same privileges and powers of heaven and the earth, such as immortality, they must pass the tests of the heavenly tribulation. Still sitting, Kenneth quietly waited for the third heavenly lightning bolt to crash into him. But this time, his body shook slightly. General Arthur's frown got tighter. Eighteen heavenly lightning bolts. Not easy, he thought. The sound of the fourth heavenly lightning bolt shook the sky. As thick as a pillar, it crashed down from the clouds. This time, Kenneth finally opened his eyes. The heavenly lightning bolt crashed into the acupoint in the top of his head and traveled through his spine before going into the altar. The remaining power of the heavenly lightning bolt lit up the engravings and arrays on the altar for a second. Kenneth stretched his arms and raised his head as he shouted, Yes! Awesome! Again! As if it was an answer to Kenneth's challenge, the heaven didn't give him any break when the fifth heavenly lightning bolt crashed down. Kenneth still withstood it with his body. The lightning bolt crashed into his body and his robe remained intact. However, his eyes suddenly lit up and a dash of light shot out into the distance. A wave as high as dozens of meters surged up in the distance when the light struck the surface of the ocean. Excellent! Again! Kenneth yelled, and his arrogance returned. As thick as a skyscraper, the sixth heavenly lightning bolt crashed from the sky toward him. The bright lightning engulfed Kenneth in it. From a distance, Sophie's breath quickened while she stared at the center of the altar. She clutched onto Jacob's palm tightly, and her fingertips began to sweat. When the lightning disappeared, Kenneth, who was sitting in the center of the altar, was still intact. He is indeed the number one cultivator. Jacob couldn't help admiring him. If it had been the simplest 4-9 heavenly tribulation, Kenneth would have passed it already. However, Kenneth was ambitious. Even if he could get into heaven, he didn't want to be in the lowest rank. The most powerful ninth heaven 18 lightning tribulation was the ultimate test for him. Faced with such a heavenly tribulation, even an immortal would be killed if he or she was not careful. Kenneth reached out and picked up the black tri-point double-edged sword. Standing up, he looked up at the sky and shouted, Again! Again! The seventh heavenly lightning bolt transformed into seven flashes, crashing toward him from seven directions. Kenneth waved his weapon, killing tribulation. With a black flash, he shattered all seven heaven lightning bolts. 
He was so proud that he was determined to fight with the heavenly tribulation. Standing in the wind in his fluttering robe, while some lightning flashed on his long-handled black tripoint double-edged sword, Sophie's uncle looked like a god who descended into the mortal world. The eighth bolt struck down quickly from the clouds. It transformed into thousands of lightning balls, attacking Kenneth from all directions. Jacob calculated silently and knew that the eighth heavenly lightning bolt was 128 times as powerful as the first one. Each of the lightning balls looked weak, but in fact, they held the same power as the first heavenly lightning bolt. Kenneth looked at ease, but it was really a challenge for him. Standing in the center of the altar, he waved the 6,500-pound black tripoint double-edged sword so fast that it turned into an impenetrable light shield. The lightning balls crashed onto the killing tribulation with loud, muffled banging noises, deafening Jacob and Sophie. Despite the situation, Sophie didn't cover her ears. She watched the situation on the altar more anxiously. Tens of thousands of soldiers stood on the edge of the altar. They dared not to move without orders. Therefore, the altar that was as big as several soccer fields was a one-man stage for Kenneth. The ninth heavenly lightning bolt shot down. It split into nine parts and whistled toward him with the power of wind and fire on top of lightning. They were extremely sharp, as if they could pierce everything in the world. The lightning could break anything and everything comprised of the five elements. Although Kenneth was top-tier eighth level with a powerful weapon, he didn't dare to be careless with it. With the 6,500-pound weapon, Kenneth was still agile. He broke eight of the nine lightning bolts one by one. The last lightning bolt was cleaved into two parts by Kenneth's 6,500-pound black tripoint double-edged sword. Tripoint double-edged sword was the legendary weapon of the ancient water god. Kenneth's moves were so powerful that they even broke the heaven lightning bolts. Seeing the excitement in the people around him, Jacob was about to cheer when Kenneth supported himself with the black tripoint double-edged sword and raised his left hand to hold his chest, spitting out a mouthful of blood. Uncle! Sophie yelled anxiously. At this moment, a light flashed in the clouds, and the tenth heavenly lightning bolt was ready to strike. The tenth is 512 times as powerful as the first one, Jacob calculated. Including this one, there were still nine lightning bolts left. However, it seemed like Kenneth couldn't pass them. Jacob clenched his fists and began to worry for Kenneth. Kenneth was fierce and rude, but he was not a bad guy. On the contrary, he was straightforward and rugged. The tenth heavenly lightning bolt, 512 times as powerful as the first one, crashed down. Kenneth forced himself to lift the tripoint double-edged sword and got ready for the battle. Once the heavenly tribulation was activated, it couldn't be stopped. Just like cultivation, the cultivators couldn't back out once they start, despite all the difficulties ahead of them. Kenneth's tripoint double-edged sword knocked the ground of the altar and made a huge noise. With blood on his lips, he looked calmly at the sky. The heavenly lightning bolt, with its ultimate power, crashed onto Kenneth's head in the form of a pure white light beam. Waving his tripoint double-edged sword, Kenneth faced it squarely. No one could back off from the heavenly tribulation. Standing straight with his head held high, Kenneth was instantly swallowed by the flash of lightning. Sophie clutched Jacob's hand tight and her fingernails cut into his palm. Also, deep dents were forming on her lower lip as she bit on it forcefully. When the flash disappeared, Kenneth kneeled in the center of the altar on one knee. His tripoint double-edged sword was shattered into pieces, and his arms were bloody. In the sky, the eleventh bolt was ready to strike. 
Knowing that Kenneth couldn't make it, Dracon shouted, Heaven and Earth Array Formation, activate! His resonant order spread to the edge of the altar. Yes! The hundreds of soldiers who were waiting around the altar answered loudly. Sneaky heaven, broken heaven, I will get you. At this moment, Kenneth flew up abruptly in his torn robe. With a roar, he suddenly turned into a black dragon and flew high into the sky. Episode 198, The Black Dragon A black dragon with black claws, black scales, a black beard, and black eyes. In the dark sky, Kenneth turned into a black dragon and soared in the air. A lightning bolt flashed in the clouds and illuminated the black dragon in the sky. It was Jacob's first time seeing a real dragon. He was stunned. According to Susan, after dragon cultivators reached the fifth level, they could transform into dragons. While the spirit concentration scroll cultivated the acupoints in the human body, the cultivation after the first level would unblock the acupoints in the dragon body by unlocking the openings on the dragon core. Brother, Dracon shouted into the sky. However, Kenneth doing his utmost with all he had, had flown up high in the sky. A lightning flash crashed into the black dragon, the eleventh heavenly lightning bolt. The lightning bolt with enormous power hit the body of the black dragon, turning it silver. Kenneth fell hundreds of meters before flying back up. Brother, come back. Dracon raised his voice and yelled again. This time, he used his nature essence while shouting to him, and his voice must be clearly heard even a hundred miles away. However, Kenneth was stubborn and wouldn't come back. He wouldn't admit defeat in the battle against heaven. When the black dragon flew close to the clouds, the twelfth heavenly lightning bolt crashed down. The blinding lightning lit up the whole space between the sky and the sea. The violent lightning bolt crashed directly onto the waist of the black dragon, almost cutting him into two halves. To pass the heavenly tribulation, Kenneth was giving it all and even used his true dragon form. Tumbling and falling from the sky, Kenneth almost fell into the sea. But the moment his claws touched the sea surface, he immediately turned around and flew back up. The dark clouds gathered from all directions, signaling that heaven was brewing the last few heavenly lightning bolts. Brother! Concerned, Dracon wanted to fly up, but Helen held him back. Sophie's eyes were full of tears. Sobbing, she bit onto her fist while watching her uncle being struck down again and again. Holding her other hand, Jacob was completely stunned. Before Kenneth could get close to the clouds, the 13th heavenly lightning bolt crashed down. The enormous energy in it boiled up the seawater beside the altar. Flapping in the rain, Kenneth swayed in his dragon form. Suddenly, he spat out a red bead. His dragon core. He's risking his life. On the high platform, Dracon yelled in astonishment. The dragon core was the life source of a dragon. As a master of top tier 8th level, Kenneth used the tri-point double-edged sword as his weapon and hadn't obtained a natal treasure. His dragon core was his ultimate weapon and last resort. The full energy of the top tier 8th level was unleashed from the dragon core. Instantly, the space between the sky and the sea was brightly illuminated as if it was daytime. 
the 13th heavenly lightning bolt shot toward Kenneth. The red bead blocked the lightning bolt. The lightning bolt and the dragon core were battling with each other, but everyone, including Jacob, knew that using the dragon core as a weapon would cause considerable damage to its owner. The 13th heavenly lightning bolt turned into sparks of white light before vanishing. Meanwhile, the dazzling red dragon core dimmed and revealed its original water elemental nature. Almost instantly, the 14th heavenly lightning bolt slashed toward Kenneth. It is about 8,000 times as powerful as the first one. Jacob's mind automatically calculated as sweat appeared in his palms. Obviously, Kenneth couldn't make it, but he wouldn't admit defeat. If he returned to the altar, the strength of more than 10,000 cultivators and the power of the array formation would probably manage to block the last few heavenly lightning bolts and keep him alive, even though his cultivation progress would likely be wiped out. Suddenly, it dawned on Jacob that Kenneth would rather die than let the soldiers block heavenly lightning bolts for him. The man was trying to reserve the soldiers and the strength of the North Atlantic. The 14th heavenly lightning bolt consisted of countless lightning flashes. With the huge sound of explosions, they shot toward Kenneth, who was high in the sky. Kenneth could no longer block them. Although he was in his dragon form, he was only an earthly dragon before reaching the heavenly dragon realm. The heavenly lightning bolt that was 8,000 times more powerful than the first one was too much for him to withstand. The 14th heavenly lightning bolt exploded on Kenneth. Since it was a dark night and Kenneth was a black dragon, it was hard to determine the severity of his injuries. However, everyone knew that he was now in a severe condition. Broken heaven. In my whole life, I have been impulsive and fierce, but I've never taken an innocent life. I'm just rash with words, and you put such a punishment on me? Swaying in the sky, Kenneth cursed in his resonant voice. As if it was a response to Kenneth's words, the 15th heavenly lightning bolt struck toward Kenneth's black dragon head. Kenneth put the dragon core back into his body and created a light shield in front of him with his last bit of essence. But in the face of a heavenly lightning bolt that was 16,000 times as powerful as the first one, any five elemental essence was as weak as a piece of paper. The lightning bolt crashed through the light shield immediately. Kenneth had to withstand it with his body. He was struck down from the sky by the fierce bolt. He tumbled and fell into the sea creating waves that were as high as mountains. Brother, Dracon yelled, and the elders guarding the altar were all dumbfounded. Sophie's face was covered in tears. Her legs weakened, and she would have fallen to the ground crying if it wasn't for Jacob's support. Everyone was silent, thinking that it might be over. Just then, Kenneth flew out of the sea in his bloody dragon form. I'm still here. I'm not defeated, he shouted and flew into the sky. The 16th heavenly lightning bolt crashed down. It was 30,000 times as powerful as the first one. If it struck Kenneth, it would be hard for him not to die. After being struck by 15 heavenly lightning bolts, Kenneth was fearless. He flew right toward it. The lightning bolt collided with Kenneth, and he bounced hundreds of meters away before falling into the sea. On the high platform, Helen furrowed her brows tightly. It was obvious that Kenneth couldn't survive the heavenly tribulation. I'm not defeated. Shaking violently, Kenneth shot out from the sea again. I, Kenneth, will poke a hole in the heaven, he shouted soaring to the clouds in the sky. Brother! Dracon knew his brother could never survive the last two lightning bolts. Regardless of the risks, he turned into a white dragon and flew into the sky. Dracon! Helen yelled, but she couldn't stop him. 
Just as big as the black dragon, the white dragon flew in the air and blocked the fierce black dragon. At this moment, the 17th heavenly lightning bolt struck down. Dracon tried to block the lightning bolt and was sent flying hundreds of meters away. Dad! Sophie screamed. Alarmed, Jacob held her to him. King! Everyone shouted in surprise, but none of them dared to leave their positions on the altar without permission. Held up for a moment by Dracon, the heavenly lightning bolt continued crashing toward Kenneth. Dracon dropped hundreds of meters before flying up and catching Kenneth, who was falling like a rock. Heaven and Earth Array Formation, activate! Dracon shouted, and his white dragon form flew toward the array formation before turning back to his human form. He carried Kenneth's human body and entered the altar. Jacob noticed that blood was gushing out of Dracon's shoulder. Obviously, he was severely wounded while trying to rescue Kenneth. Regardless of his wound, he stood up immediately. Unleash full force to block the 18th heavenly lightning bolt. Yes! All the elders, generals, and soldiers answered as one. In the sky, lightning flashed in the clouds. The last heavenly lightning bolt was the most powerful one. Kenneth would not be able to pass the heavenly tribulation, but he would live if the last heavenly lightning bolt were blocked. The lightning was more like a huge laser beam. Dozens of colorful defense shields above the altar were activated, but like pieces of paper, they were instantly broken by the heavenly lightning bolt. It was 130,000 times as powerful as the first lightning bolt, which could kill an ordinary cultivator. Holding his chest and spewing blood, Dracon ordered, Earthly branches, first, third, fifth, seventh, ninth, and eleventh general, block the first wave. Heavenly stems, first, third, fifth, seventh, and ninth elder, assist. Yes, the generals and elders took the order. The heavenly lightning bolt arrived at the core defense array formation above the altar. Five elders, six generals, and 600 soldiers took their positions and unleashed their nature essence. The entire white jade altar was lit up instantly and a surge of terrifying energy was activated. The abundant nature essence proved that the white jade was indeed a piece of advanced nature treasure. The core defense array formation had five layers. The outermost layer began to bend and shatter under the force of the lightning bolt. The outer layer broke with a crisp banging noise. Episode 199, The Final Moment Five purple-robed elders, six generals, and six hundred soldiers were all bounced back. Block the second wave. Pale-faced, Dracon held his hand to his chest and continued to order. Six generals took half a step forward with six hundred soldiers while the five purple-robed elders unleashed their energy. Their efforts paused the advancement of the lightning bolt for only six seconds before the second defense layer was shattered. It seemed that the last heavenly lightning bolt was unstoppable. If it crashed down, no one could escape without a scratch. Everyone would be severely wounded, while those with weak cultivation strength would die on the spot. That was why Kenneth refused to return to the altar when he saw the great power of the heavenly tribulation. He knew that he couldn't pass it, and the Ninth Heaven 18 Lightning Tribulation was more powerful than the altar could withstand. He would rather die than enlist help from the clan and harm the members. Everyone, together. Dracon knew no strategy would work in the face of the ultimate power. 
he ordered everyone to get ready for the final blow. The ten purple-robed elders, twelve golden-armored generals, and twelve thousand silver-armored soldiers stood in their positions, and the others stood on the engravings and arrays of the altar while injecting their nature essence into them. Both Dracon and Helen squatted down, ready to unleash their full energy to fight with the heavenly tribulation. Jacob didn't back off. Although his cultivation strength was low, he kneeled and placed his hand on the altar. The heavenly lightning bolt broke another core defense layer, and the surface of the altar began to crack. Meanwhile, all the intricate engravings on the altar began to hum. Instantly, the warm and white light illuminated the whole sky. With a booming noise, the heavenly lightning bolt destroyed the second last defense layer. The final moment had come. The heavenly lightning bolt with 130,000 times the power of the first one had broken the second last core defense layer of the array formation and was crashing toward the people on the altar. Wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. The heavenly lightning bolt had broken the layers of wood, fire, earth, and metal. Only the last and most crucial water elemental defense array formation was left. The five elements created each other. Since the heavenly lightning bolt had broken four of them, the core of the array formation was damaged. Seeing the blue light shield beginning to shake, everyone gritted their teeth and transferred all their energy into the altar. Jacob had thought that the power of the lightning would be cold in the pouring storm. However, when the heavenly lightning bolt was above his head, he sensed the burning pressure from it through the last layer of the array formation. Its temperature was as high as 10,000 degrees, hot enough to burn people into ashes instantly. If it had not been for the protection of the water elemental defense array formation, all of them would have been burnt to ashes. Even the purple-robed elders couldn't open their eyes at this dazzling heavenly lightning bolt. Sophie squatted next to Jacob, tightly holding his arm. Life or death, they were in it together. The blue defense array formation shook violently. It could collapse at any moment. The altar that was as big as several soccer fields began to crack all over and started to shake violently. The heavenly lightning bolt was crashing against the altar with a greater force than any of them had ever seen. If it weren't for the nature essences that thousands of cultivators injected into the altar, it would have been shattered into debris by the first wave of the strike. Jacob put all of his nature essence into the altar and felt his arms go numb. This was the power of the heavenly lightning bolt. It was not an ordinary heavenly lightning bolt, but the heavenly tribulation from the ninth heaven. Under the support of the nature essence from everyone present, the last layer of the blue defense array formation was humming and blinking, managing to withstand the 18th heavenly lightning bolt. Occasionally, some soldiers were bounced off the altar by the power of the heaven tribulation as its power was spread onto the people on the altar. It was natural that the weaker cultivators couldn't bear the pressure. More importantly, not everyone could withstand the power of the lightning bolt that could break all five elements. Pale-faced, the elders could barely manage it, but the soldiers were bounced off one by one. The power of the final heavenly lightning bolt above the blue array formation didn't disappear. The power of this heavenly tribulation was awe-inspiring. General Arthur, take Soph and Jacob out of here. Dracon turned his head and shouted. In this critical moment, the heavenly lightning bolt could crash down at any moment, and everyone under it would probably die. After all, it was against the natural law for them to help Kenneth withstand the heavenly tribulation. Yes, your majesty. Pale-faced and exhausted, General Arthur stood up and hurried toward Jacob and Sophie. Dad, I won't go, Sophie yelled. Soph! Dracon raised his hand and pushed her aside without touching her. 
General Arthur hurried over and helped Sophie up. Princess, please go with me. He looked at Jacob, who was still injecting his nature essence into the altar, and said, Prince, please go with me. Leave it to his majesty. Seeing all the generals and elders who were still supporting the altar with pale faces, and the soldiers who kept coming back onto the altar after being bounced off, Jacob shook his head and said, No, I won't go. You take Soph with you. Your Majesty, please retreat. Suddenly, Liam raised his head and shouted at Dracon on the high platform. Others seconded his plea, shouting, Your Majesty, please retreat. Your Majesty, please retreat. No, I won't. Dracon placed his hands that were covered by the green energy back on the altar. I will fight with you. Kenneth, with blood all over him, took several deep breaths before struggling to stand on his feet. Brother, let me go out and die with the heavenly tribulation. If Kenneth were wiped out by the heavenly lightning bolt, the entire heavenly tribulation would end and the other people wouldn't die with him. His brother was on one side, and thousands of the elite cultivators of the North Atlantic were on the other. Dracon was in a dilemma. We are willing to block the heavenly tribulation for the third lord. The soldiers also shouted, and their voices repeatedly echoed on the altar. The stunning scene set everyone's heart on fire. Kenneth was the supreme commander in the North Atlantic Dragon Palace. The generals and the soldiers had been fighting alongside. Okay, we will face life and death together. Pressing against the bloody wounds on his chest with one of his hands, Kenneth stood up and placed his other bloody hand on the altar. The blue array formation was instantly covered in a red mist. He was putting his dragon blood and vital essences into the array formation. Even after being struck by 17 heavenly lightning bolts, Kenneth still possessed some nature essence. The array formation that was on the verge of collapsing was strengthened by what he did, and it began to push back against the last heavenly lightning bolt. The morale was greatly boosted. With blood-red eyes, Kenneth continued to inject his blood into the altar. The engravings on the milky white altar began to turn pink. The array formation above the altar hummed louder, releasing dazzling blue light and blocking the white heavenly lightning bolt. Sophie took the opportunity to run back to Jacob before placing her hands on the altar. Even without her dragon core, she still possessed a tiny bit of nature essence. Moved by what he saw, Jacob circulated his sword shadow scroll to its limit, feeling like his weak remaining power was being absorbed bit by bit by the engravings of the altar. This heavenly lightning bolt with 130,000 times the power of the first one was in a tough battle against the array formation consisting of the power of these cultivators. It was a long and hard moment. Everyone gritted their teeth not daring to relax even a little bit. The deadlock lasted for a long while before the heavenly lightning bolt exploded in the air abruptly. Seconds later, the blue array formation also shattered into pieces. A huge crack also appeared in the middle of the altar, tearing it into two parts. Only the elders and generals were able to stand. The soldiers all fell to the ground. This battle exhausted all of their nature essence. If their enemies launched a sudden attack, they would all die. Of course, they had chosen a spot in the deep sea and kept the location a secret. No enemy would come and attack them. As if heaven was resentful of the defeat, after the 18 heavenly lightning bolts, another small lightning bolt was released by the clouds. Everyone was astonished since this small lightning bolt struck directly toward Dracon, Kenneth, and Helen. Heaven was punishing them for blocking and interfering with the heavenly tribulation. Sword Shadow Scroll, absorb! Jacob, who stood near them, 
suddenly lifted his hands subconsciously. Episode 200, Seven-Colored Snow Lotus As if it heard Jacob's summon, the heavenly lightning bolt flew toward his palm. Five elemental sword energies could be combined into sword energies that possessed lightning power. The heavenly lightning bolt in the heavenly tribulation was the ultimate form of lightning power. This small heavenly lightning bolt entered Jacob's body and traveled through his acupoints before settling down in his dragon core. Jacob exhaled deeply, and even the air he just exhaled was mingled with some lightning power. Dracon and Helen gasped, while Sophie, who was by his side, also widened her eyes, forgetting to cry. Just then, under the stimulation of the heavenly lightning bolt, Six openings in his dragon core were unlocked. Colorful lights engulfed Jacob's body as he jumped from the first level to the second level. The second level needed ten openings, and Jacob had thirteen now. The Sword Shadow Scroll was lightning cultivation. Jacob's theory of absorbing the lightning power of the Heavenly Tribulation with his technique was proved right. For cultivators, the lightning tribulation was dangerous and painful. But to Jacob, it was a piece of cake. He was even spared from the pain caused by the level up when he advanced using the lightning power. Suddenly, Kenneth spat out a big mouthful of blood. Uncle! Sophie, who had been staring at Jacob in astonishment, turned around and rushed toward Kenneth. The almighty Kenneth finally lost his balance and fell to the ground. By now, the altar was ruined and the cold wind blew onto them. Kenneth, in his torn robe, was covered in blood. Regardless of his blood and sweat, Sophie threw herself into his arms and burst into tears. Uncle can't make it this time. I'm content with the fact that I will die in one piece. Kenneth, an unrivaled cultivator in the mortal world for hundreds of years, now looked defeated. He touched Sophie's head gently and said, Soph, you must take care of yourself. Uncle, you won't die. Sophie cried in his arms. Kid, come here. Kenneth glared at Jacob with his bloody eyes and shouted at him. Jacob walked over and stood before him. From now on, you have to take care of Soph for me. I know that you're not a bad guy. The only problem you have is that you're still a kid. Well, I have only one twentieth of my power left. I'll transfer it to you. He reached out to grab Jacob's arm. Before Jacob could react... Dracon slapped off Kenneth's arm. Brother, what are you doing? With my remaining strength, I can only live for a few hours. I will transfer it to him and help him get stronger. Kenneth lifted his head and said. Helen sighed and pinched her nose to hold back her tears. She had always scolded him for being rude, but she knew that he was just quick-tempered and was not malicious at all. My meridians are broken, my dragon core is damaged, and my reputation as the number one cultivator is gone. I will transfer my remaining power to this kid so that he could protect Soph better. It's my final gift to Soph as her uncle. Kenneth continued after seeing Dracon still standing between him and Jacob. Save your breath. With a cold face, Dracon turned to look at General Arthur and said, don't stand there in a daze. Go and ask the little boy to come here. Yes, your majesty. General Arthur turned immediately and dived into the sea after forming an energy sphere around him. Where is Kayla? Kenneth looked around and asked. Although Kenneth was still sitting down, 
he looked a lot better than a few seconds ago. Perhaps it was due to terminal lucidity. A beautiful female cultivator, who seemed to be in her 30s, walked over and looked at Kenneth with a frown. Out of the ten purple-robed elders on the altar, she was the only woman. I promised that I would pass the heavenly tribulation, but I failed, Kenneth said to her softly. Don't talk now. You need your rest, this female cultivator named Kayla said gently. You've always been fierce towards me, but I know that you are concerned about me. I can't control my big mouth, and my heavenly tribulation got this powerful. It is a punishment for neglecting the cultivation of personality and temperament, Kenneth said with a bitter smile. The smile didn't look good on his beat-up face, but Jacob's heart ached, especially after he saw Sophie's heart-wrenching sob. Kayla was silent. Kenneth was the overall number one cultivator of the North Atlantic, and she was the best female cultivator of the North Atlantic. Although Kenneth was more powerful than her, he was very obedient in front of her. He would immediately shut up if she glanced at him. After bickering with him for 200 years, she expected that Kenneth would ascend into the enviable Heaven Dragon realm. She had never imagined that it would end like this. No one had expected that the Heavenly Tribulation would be the mighty Ninth Heaven 18 Lightning Tribulation. When the first lightning bolt struck, her heart sank. Faced with such a powerful heavenly tribulation, Kenneth had a clearer understanding of the situation than her. However, no one could stop the heavenly tribulation once it was activated. The only thing that he could do was fight to his death. Under Kayla's watch, he didn't want to lose like a coward. He wanted to die a hero. Everyone was silent. The only sound was Sophie's sobbing. Jacob didn't know that Kayla was, in fact, Susan's master. The sound of water splashing broke the silence. General Arthur and the little boy arrived at Dracon's side. Little master, my brother failed the heavenly tribulation. I must rely on you to save his life. Dracon bowed to him respectfully and said. The haughty little boy glanced at Kenneth, who was on the ground, and said, Broken meridians? Damaged dragon core? I'm afraid that even the immortality elixirs wouldn't even be able to save him. Everyone's heart sank at his answer. As if he had expected it, Kenneth laughed carelessly. Anyway, I have no regret in my life since I battled with the most powerful heavenly tribulation. Jacob, kid, come over here and I'll transfer my remaining power to you. Jacob didn't move since he didn't want Kenneth to die after transferring him his power. However, he didn't dare to refuse him outright, knowing that Kenneth would cuss at him for that. What's the hurry? Seeing Kenneth's anger... The little boy touched his chin, trying to look older and more experienced before continuing. I'm not finished yet. I can't save him if I don't have nature treasures. However, I could probably save his life with the help of one item. What's that? Instead of getting mad at the little boy for keeping them in suspense, Dracon was pleased with his words and asked. Seven colored snow lotuses from the Sky Mountain in the Northwest the little boy said slowly. Seven colored snow lotuses? Jacob's heart lurched, since these lotuses were the most fitting mystic crystals for his five elemental cultivation technique, according to Jade and Julia. Okay, I'll go look for them immediately, Dracon said. Why is your family so rash? The little boy gave him a dirty look and said, I'm not finished yet. Please go on. Dracon held his temper in check and bowed slightly towards the little boy to show his respect. The seven colored snow lotuses need to be over a thousand years old and I need six pieces. 
However, the older lotuses are mostly located in the depth of the caves. The deeper you go into the cave, the stronger the repulsion to the nature essence. In other words, only a cultivator who's below the third level could go and pick the seven colored snow lotuses, the little boy said slowly while nodding his head. Below third level, they looked around and their gazes rested on Jacob. However, the process of collecting seven colored snow lotuses will be quite dangerous. If one is a lot weaker than third level, it would be difficult to get them. All in all, it's not an easy task to get these 1,000-year seven-colored snow lotuses, the little boy continued. Dracon furrowed his brows and nodded with a grim face. The little boy glanced around and pointed at Jacob. You seem to be only at second level. Well, you can do it. Go get the seven-colored snow lotuses for me, and I will make the elixir for him. Jacob looked at him in skepticism, feeling like there was more to it. Seeing Jacob's gaze, the little boy told the truth. Okay, I'll be frank. I only need three seven-colored snow lotuses to save him. However, you need to get me three more as payment. To be clear, I want three. I won't save him for anything less. Jacob... The task is too dangerous for you since you have no experience going on such trips. I'll send someone else, Dracon interrupted. It's fine, I'll go. Jacob raised his hand and stopped Dracon. The mountain in the northwest is within Tom's territory and he will cause trouble for people who are from the North Atlantic. You mean... Dracon was baffled. With Kenneth on the verge of death... As his elder brother, Dracon couldn't keep a clear head. I will go. I'm in a better position, Jacob said as he pointed at his forehead. Oh, Inspector? Dracon suddenly understood. In fact, when Jacob showed up on the altar with Liam, Dracon noticed the mark on his forehead. But his mind was centered around the upcoming heavenly tribulation, and he had no time to ask about it. Now, seeing the mark, he knew that Jacob had joined the inspector system through Susan. In that case, Jacob was a better candidate for this mission, since Tom was technically one of his peers. Dad, I'll go with him. Sophie stood up abruptly with tears on her face. Nonsense. Dracon glared at her. You have no strength at all for a trip like this. Sophie bit her lip, feeling wronged and sad. After all, she wanted to help her uncle. You must bring back the seven colored snow lotuses in one day. This means that from now on, you have 24 hours, and I must sustain his life with elixirs. If you are late at all, then I can't promise that I can save him the little boy told Jacob. Okay, I'll go right now, but I need one person to go with me, Jacob said. Who do you need? Dracon asked. Susan, Jacob answered, 